Once the traditional hero in an American computer game, the brave U.S. soldier. These days, there's an array of good and bad guys to pick and choose from to fit any gaming taste. Osama, Gaddafi, and endless no-name terrorists are increasingly breaking through in the world of virtual reality. It shows that people aren't just going to buy the idea of uh, the U.S. run by globalists is always good in every war it's in. And so I do think it overall reflects uh, that people want to, you know, play the other side. Walking in lockstep with changing political realities, computer games let the player's imagination run wild. I would pay good money to be a cat for an hour just to be in its brain. I mean, you know, why not? So if I could play a game that allowed me to feel like, uh, you know, a, a different person or a different gender or a, a, different, a different someone from another, another country or whatever, I would love that. It is a form of entertainment. Navid Kansari, creator of the blockbuster Grand Theft Auto, says providing lots of sides to any story can revolutionize how games are played. It's not a matter of bad guys going after good guys or good guys going after bad guys. It's a matter of a whole bunch of people being in a number of different colors. His latest game, 1979 Revolution, is a multi-hero game based on the Iranian hostage crisis. Players can be American soldiers or Iranian revolutionaries. I'm not pointing to saying that Americans are bad or Iranians are bad. I'm saying the situation is bad. Just days after Osama bin Laden's death, a game recreating the raid appeared. Gamers choose to kill or protect America's number one terrorist. For some, the idea of playing the traditional bad guy is offensive, even anti-American. But with the brutality of America's wars having blurred the lines of what's acceptable in the real world, the virtual world has caught up. We see torture being sold as good. Uh, we're seeing a yeah, preemptive war as good. We're seeing classical police state actions uh, as good. We really just take the humanity completely out of war, so why not play the part of the bad guys? I mean, you know, 10 years ago, it was the bad guys that tortured. Now we're told the good guys torture. Columnist and author Ted Rawl says what you play doesn't reflect who you are. When I was a little kid, uh, if, you, if you played too much with the black crayon, they called you down to the principal's office and sent you to the school psychiatrist because you had suicidal thoughts. The U.S. military is reportedly disenchanted with its successful recruiting tool, video games, growing in diversity. The dilemma um, for the video game industry is that, you know, the, the enemy, the so-called enemy that's it being fought in the U.S. wars are just poor people in other countries and trying to uh, turn them into something else um, is just isn't rooted in reality. That's why the military is upset about this is because they want us to see the people they're saying is the enemy as these, you know, faceless demons um, that really aren't people. Despite having the biggest military budget in the world and Pentagon funding of combat games that aim to promote the idea of America as the superhero, the U.S. is finding it is no longer the only player in town. Anastasia Cherkina, RT, New York.